What's going on, my little piglets? It's your BFF Porch Up here, and I'm coming at you with entry number 22. 22. Holy crap, I can't believe I got that right. So that makes this June 22nd, 2021. Uh, and uh, I think this is Cass's first appearance on this year's vlogs. So say hi to Castiel in the comments. Say hello, Castiel. Um, and for those that can't spell Castiel, like it took me like a year to learn how to spell. It's just C-A-S. You can just put Cass. <laughs> uh, wife is here. I am. She's in the background. She says that she looks like a monster. She looks ugly. She looks like a monster. She no, does... just from the angle of my makeup is actually done and my hair is yeah. curled. But from the angle, and I'm far too comfortable sitting in my recliner right now, if he were to turn that camera, I look like the Loch Ness Monster. I wouldn't do that to you. But anyway... <laughs> So, um, nothing really much to report today. Very uneventful day. Um, <laughs> no, but seriously, uh, just, uh, at work today, uh, delivered a bunch of stuff for the, uh, trips, uh, Harley Davidson, the, the guy that owns the, you know, the backstory more, better than I do. So he read his obituary yeah well you know the backstory better than i do so he started the first trips harley davidson in like 1956 in roswell new mexico and then at some point decided to move it to amarillo and uh then retired and lived on his ranch the circle t ranch and worked his butt off and was a very well respected man very much loved man but he passed away i think he was 94. good run good run but yeah. so i just delivered a wow i delivered a, a bunch of arrangements to and fro uh for his family and for himself and everything and i got to go to the uh, church where they were holding his service and uh they had a motorcycle right at the front of the uh the stage and i was like that's cool that's cool uh, i was gonna ask the guy that was working the av uh how hard was it to get that motorcycle in here <laughs> but he was too busy like fidgeting i guess they were trying to get like a uh memorial thing going on for him so i didn't want to, to bug him and i was the first one to deliver anything it was just the motorcycle and that one arrangement that i dropped off um but then they closed the shop, the Trips Harley, from uh, 12 to 3 today. And uh, I had to take another plant to the shop. And the front door was locked because it was 2.53. Um, so I just sat there and hung out for a bit. And then uh, about three minutes later, a, a guy in a leather vest and sunglasses comes up to the door. And I'm like, okay, usually I would be terrified. But... Uh, I think this guy works here. He's affiliated somehow because it's a motorcycle shop. So anyway, so he's like, hey, the lady that works here says just go to the side door. I was like, okay, which one? And he's like, he pointed over to the left. And I was like, okay. Uh, because before that, I'm literally just standing there holding this giant plant and uh, like looking in, trying to see if anybody's like at the door or anything like that. And uh, no dice. Um, and even the mailman was right behind me and he's like, the doors are locked, huh? And I was like, yep, they closed at 12 to three. He's like, why? And I said, oh, the, the guy, like the OG that, that started this, he passed away. And he's like, oh, I didn't know. So the doors are locked. <laughs> like the guy's like just trying to do his job and he's just trying to move on. He's like, what the, okay, cool. The guy's dead. Sorry about you. Uh, where do I put the mail? <laughs> like type of situation. Um, but while I was working today, I did listen to a few uh, podcast episodes. Um, one in particular was a old interview from 2001 of Sean Delaney, who was like the unofficial like fifth member of Kiss, and he's the guy, regardless of what Gene and Paul or anybody says, he's the guy that kind of came up with like the choreography and the pyro and pretty much the kiss that we know today if it wasn't for sean delaney kiss would have just been a club band in new york that never went anywhere um which they brought up something that i never 
never noticed, and I don't know why I never noticed it. So Sean Delaney's depiction of Kiss was right right side of the stage, got Gene Simmons, Evil Incarnate, bad guy. On the left side of the stage, you have Ace Fraley, the anomaly, spaceman, good guy. In the back, you have Peter Chris on the drums, who is the power of the band. And then you got Paul Stanley in the middle, that is the quote-unquote human being that draws energy from the good, the bad, and the powerful. And that's why he became the front man of Kiss instead of Gene Simmons, because they said it made more sense, because... Sean Delaney said, demons don't talk to people. Cats don't talk to people. <laughs> Spacemen don't talk to people. But Paul Stanley, the rock star, the star child, definitely will talk to people. So I thought that was a very awesome thing that uh, he said. Uh, unfortunately, he did pass away. So that's why they had to dig up a 20-year-old interview of him. Uh, but I just thought that was a very interesting notion that I never noticed. Being a KISS fan my entire life, I never noticed that. So, the more you know, right? The cast move? Why did cast move? I don't know. Now I have no animals. But I just had that cutie, like, in the background, but now he's gone. I probably went to go take a, get a drink of water or go to the bathroom or something. Um, we got a new litter box here for the, the cats. And uh, I checked this morning, and there was some pee. I didn't see any poops. Did you see any, anything? I haven't looked. Um... It is uh, Kitty Poo Club, and it is pretty much a, besides the poop, it's like a set it and forget it type of litter box where you just recycle it at the end of the month and they bring you a new box each month. And uh, I forgot the stuff that it was, that uh, the material that's the, uh, the litter's made out of, uh, but they're pretty much silica. silica. Uh, they're like pretty much, it, it, it looked like a bag of meth. Whenever I uh, open up the box, it's like, oh, dang, you know, if it were blue, I'd be like looking for Heisenberg. But it was uh, really cool. Um, and what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to take the poop out and you're just supposed to stir the pee in. Just stir it. Uh, so it's not really set it and forget it. My uh, description kind of fell apart on itself. But anyway, um, oh, the AC kicked on. Nice. It was getting a little hot. Um, so that was kind of cool. Um, and we're only spending like what ten more dollars a month than we were with yeah. the other litter boxes. Yep. Uh, we got two. We'll get a third if it's necessary, but I don't think it's going to be necessary. I think that two, two is enough. Some people say eight, eight is enough. Two is enough. Uh, but the first reaction that Morty the baby had was to eat it. And that stuff, you're supposed to pee on it. And it's supposed to absorb the liquid, so he puts it in his mouth. And it gets stuck to his lip. And like this giant chunk gets stuck to his lip. He's just So I had to rip it off his lip. And sure enough, like it was sticking to my flesh. That's how sticky it was. And sorry, I got to stop. Hey! Chandler. Sorry, I had to discipline my doggo. Uh, he, he's a very nice. Come here. Come here. Why are you such a pervert? You see it? Hey. Sit. Hey. Hey, wait. You found it? That was rude. Yep, he's loud. Ami Bear will come here and listen to me. Yeah, Ami Bear. See? She's a good doggo. She's a good girl. Thank you for the kisses. Thank you for the kisses. Alright, so I don't know what else to, to talk, talk about. Um... I did discover a new podcast that I didn't know was a podcast. I just thought it was a YouTube channel, uh, Tales from the Dark. And usually what they talk about is, you know, they, they call it the ooky, spooky type of stories. But once in a while, they have to tell, like, a true crime story. Um, so the one that I listened to was uh, food delivery horror stories and ride-sharing horror stories. Um, and... Some of them, I'm like, oh, yeah, I've encountered stuff like that before. And then there are other stories where I'm like, absolutely not. Like, one of them was, like, legit. Uh, this guy was dropping off food for uh, DoorDash. Uh, Bob, the, uh, the uh, host of the show. And he says, in the time it took him 
to go drop off the food and come back to his car, somebody had snuck into his back seat. And that was always a fear of mine whenever I was delivering, especially at night, that somebody just sneaks into the back seat and then, you know, strangles you or you know, Michael Myers you from Halloween uh, 1978. But luckily that never happened to me. Um, but he was talking about how he uh, kind of had a fight or flight type of situation. Um, okay, no, it was a story that he told. Somebody told him this story uh, while he's waiting for a food order. Um, so I don't know what I would do in that situation. What would you do in that situation? This is a random dude just popped into your back seat while you were dropping off food. Or if you were doing it for DoorDash or Uber uh, Eats or whatever. Well, I'm a female. Yeah. So that's a little bit scarier. Oh, yeah, for sure. And the co-host, Brittany, is obviously a female, so she put her two cents in about the situation, and too. If, first of all, if I were doing something like that alone, I would carry pepper spray or my taser. Mm hmm And, well, that would be the end of that. Yeah, so Bob Hicks, the, the uh, host of the show said that he is locking the doors and he says uh we're going for a ride and he says he would get about like 20 miles out of the city limits and then he would drop that guy off he'd pull him out of the back seat and just leave him in the middle of nowhere and i was like that's probably something that i would you know probably do no i, I probably wouldn't do that i'd probably just like hey can i help you can you get the hell out of my car um and then the the guy that told him the, the story because he was like, how did it get resolved? What happened? Because the guy in the back seat, he was like, obviously he, he was drunk. And his excuse was, oh, I'm sorry. I thought this was my wife's car and I was trying to scare her. I'm like, mm, I don't know about that. Yeah. Um, and so the guy called uh, DoorDash and was like, hey, this creepy guy just popped into my back seat. What the hell am I supposed to do? Um, and DoorDash pretty much responded with, there's nothing we can do about it. It's like, huh? And then there was like another story that, that he told about this guy. He, uh, uh, DoorDash gave him an additional $7 tip for his traumatic experience that he went through. Um, so I thought that was kind of shitty, but regardless, anywho. All right, guys, I'm going to get out of here. We're going to get out of here. Um, tired i'm gonna probably go lay down here in a bit oh dang i was hoping that would trigger chandler but i didn't do shit uh but anyway anything in conclusion you want to say or not that i can think of no so i guess we're gonna get out of here guys thank y'all so much once again for dropping by you guys are awesome and always remember my little piglets colin pork chop loves y'all the most so y'all take it easy guys and we will see y'all manana tomorrow at some point bye guys Say bye. Bye.